Hey, I'm Tommy and this is a review of the Jinbei EF150D. This little guy right here. So let's cover some pretty basic things about this light. Number one, it is 150 watts. And if you're good at basic math, you can figure out that's 30 watts brighter than the Aperture 120 series. And being that they're both around the range of $600, you get 30 more watts for your dollars, which is pretty good. And this is just something that I've been finding interesting with these different kinds of lights is they all have a different kind of chip pattern. Check it out. A pair of welding glasses, perfectly nice and square. Just what you would expect from a nice quality light. What you do need to know about this light is it doesn't ship with a ton of standard accessories, like the reflector, which does not come with the Jinbei EF150D. Fortunately, you can get these things for like $20 or $30 on Amazon. So it's bones mount and it doesn't come with a reflector. That's not that big of a deal. What is interesting about this light is it comes with its own battery. And the battery is not required to power this light. Jesus Christ. Now the batteries this light uses are custom to the Jinbei EF150D line, but they're kind of neat. They have a little button here that tells you how charged they are. You can charge this battery separately on a dock with its own little charging thing that of course it comes with. So you get a battery and a way to power the light without the battery, which is more than the competition, which generally just doesn't come with the battery at all. Competition being the Aperture 120D, which is which takes Sony V-Lock batteries, uh, but that light is like $650, doesn't come with any batteries. And the battery will last on a full charge for about two hours. But again, it doesn't really matter if you run out of power and you're on location with plugs because you can power it with just a regular power cable. And it comes with a power cable of its own and the power cable is super long, maybe not super long, maybe like 10 feet or so. Now when you order one of these lights, it comes in this highly durable travel case, which is actually pretty awesome. Uh, it came in a cardboard box, um, and the only thing in the cardboard box was the actual case itself. There was no additional packing materials, which shows you the quality of the carrying case that they give you. It kept the light in perfect condition all the way to my house from Hong Kong. I'm in America, California to be exact. It also comes with a nice little plastic snoot thingy, uh, Bones plastic snoot thing, uh, just basically to protect the heat sink and the LED chip. Let's go ahead and put this back on there. Now something that I see kind of in a, as an advantage to this light is you don't actually have any crazy power bricks like you would with the aperture lights. Meaning, if you're gonna use this thing battery powered, it's basically like a big giant flashlight that you can carry handheld. Man, this thing is freaking bright. Very portable. Now by contrast, if you tried to do that with the Aperture Series lights, uh, you'd have to carry around the light with the power control ballast, with the battery attached, and it'd be kind of clunky and complicated. This thing you can, you can mount pretty much anywhere and with relative ease very quickly. Now it doesn't actually come with any kind of remote and I don't have one to show you how it operates. It is compatible with remotes and you can order them separately, but that's an additional expense. So I don't have the remote for this light. But the remotes are definitely more of a luxury and not so much as a necessity. So all in all, you're looking at this light is around the range of like 550. And if you're trying to go for the aperture lights, those are more around the range of 650. When you look at the build quality of this light, you do see a lot of plastic construction on the body, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it just doesn't feel as premium as say something that has like a magnesium alloy body. But that's not so much a bad thing as it is a personal preference. The plastic does feel quite durable. So let's go over an entire list of cons for this light, being completely objective here. It's a very short list, to be completely honest. The body has a lot of plastic, which in my opinion is a con. It doesn't come with a reflector or a wireless remote. And at full brightness, the fan noise does become something that you will need to pay attention to which actually is something that is to be expected of a light with 150 watts of power. So it's really not so much a con as it is a personal preference of using lights that don't have as much power to avoid fan noise. Because pretty much any light that you get into in this market that has this much power is going to have the same fan noise. So you can't really see that as a con. So let's take a quick look at the operation of this light. So it's got a switch here that you can switch between battery and AC power. Obviously it's not plugged in right now. 
and you can really quickly scroll all the way down to 10%, really quickly all the way to 100%. And if you hold it down, you can get access to the wireless switching. And you can change the ID. Obviously, I don't have the remote, so I don't really know how well that works. And if you double tap it, you can go from percentage to watts and go down in five watt increments. That's pretty much all there is to it. Super easy light to use. And now the moment you've been waiting for, some practical testing. All right, so I'm in my very dimly lit garage. Let's go ahead and see what 100% looks like. Ooh, looks a little bit overexposed. There we go, we're at 10% power now. Again, I'm filming with the GH5, not the GH5S. Uh -huh, so this camera is not great at low light. Let's go outside. So I'm outside right now at f1.2, shutter speed 180th of a second, and ISO 200. And I'm on a GH5, and we can't really see anything. Let's see how much we can light this scene up. Completely. So if you're concerned about output, uh, the Jinbei EF150D will light up pretty much anything you need. Uh, I know that Aperture sells a 300D version. Um, honestly, I feel like that's just overkill. Here's an idea. Let's see if we can light my whole scene by just reflecting the one light off of the ceiling. Because sometimes people want to do that for an entirely soft overhead lighting effect. Here we go. Are you ready for this? Now, I don't know if you noticed, but the light is actually behind me, reflected off of the ceiling over here in kind of a key light position, and then perfectly exposing my face. And uh, the light is currently only at 20% power. That's pretty bright. Bones mount activate. Clearly, most of the people who get the Jinbei EF-150D are wondering how it performs as a key light. So let's go ahead and check that out. Also, uh, if you're wondering where I got the softbox, link in the description. Super cheap. Also, this is something I just noticed, but the, uh, the little handle here that helps you adjust where the light is positioned is not the weird geared clicky kind, it's actually a friction style mount, so you can position it exactly where you want to, as opposed to other types of mounts that are geared or have notches, and you can't exactly point them where you want to. Like this one, the Godox SL60W. See, it's notched, you can only point it in particular directions. Six feet away, 10% power, and behind a two-layer softbox. And I'm almost blown out. That's how strong this light is. So I could put another layer of diffusion up, or I could move this light back a little bit further. But if you're looking for a lot of light, or if you want to do some complex lighting, like book lighting, this is going to be a light that's going to be able to do that for you. So I adjusted my settings a little bit. Uh, I'm at f2.2, uh, 150th of a second shutter, which is pretty close to 180 degree shutter angle. And I'm at ISO 200 with the light still six feet away from me. And uh, the light is again at minimum power, only 10%. And this is the kind of exposure you're gonna get behind a two layer softbox. Uh, it looks pretty good. Uh, it, actu it actually looks great, uh, just like this. Just going over the pros and cons again in kind of like a final summary here. Uh, the light is super bright, it has great color quality, uh, it's very versatile and extremely portable. It comes with a great case and there's very very few cons about it, mainly being the plastic body construction. It doesn't come with any remote or its own reflector and that's about it. It's quite a bit better value than the alternatives, uh, mainly being the Aperture lines. Um, Aperture just has a more widely known name, and so that's why, that's why I was so happy to review some different kinds of lights uh, that people aren't so familiar with. There's a lot of great stuff out there, it's just hard to find. So that's really all I have to say about this light. Uh, thanks for watching, 
I'm Tommy. Hit the subscribe button. Yada yada. Have a good day. Or night. I mean, I don't know why I say have a good day or have a good night. I mean, people can watch these videos any time of day. Whatever. Have, have a good one.